So if you've seen the show Shark Tank, uh, it's a reality show sort of based around venture capital where people bring in ideas uh, for companies or, or even companies that are already up and running and try to pitch them to, uh, to the judges, to the sharks. And so we have three sharks here today. Uh, uh, Ralph Baxter, who we all know, is uh, the, the chair of uh, the, the Legal Executive Institute. Um, Dr. Ron Dolan, who's a senior research fellow at Harvard uh, Law School, and Bill Henderson, who's uh, and Sanjay was caught in the hurricane, so uh, replacing Sanjay today is Bill Henderson, who will be playing Sanjay today uh, uh, due to the hurricane, and we wish him, we wish him well. So um, I'm going to introduce each of the comp uh, representatives of each of the companies, and um, they're going to present here in the middle using the, using the hand mics. Each company is going to have 10 minutes. That's going to be divided between an elevator pitch of about four minutes and then six minutes with engagement with the, with the judges. <laughs> All right, Sharks, our next, our next uh, company up, our next person up is Michael Mills, who's the co-founder and chief strategy officer at Neota Logic. Michael, take it away. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk today about our corporate work rather than our access to justice work, but if anybody wants to talk to me about that after this, happy to do that. Uh, my partners and I founded this company because we saw a convergence of predicaments. I don't need to talk to this audience about the law firm predicament. I don't need to talk very much about the law department predicament. But they do converge. They are both fundamentally talking about more for less. Both of those institutions, law firms and law departments, need to solve a set of problems in the corporate context. This uh, diagram, which was drawn for me originally by the general counsel of a big bank, along the x-axis we have frequency uh, from rare to common, and along the y-axis we have from trivial to survival threatening. Over on the right-hand side, we have a set of problems that individually may be relatively small, but in the aggregate are very consequential. A single HR decision that is made incorrectly is a mistake. A pile of in HR decisions that are made incorrectly are a pattern in practice that feeds into a class action. Solving those in the traditional methods of the law, the medieval craftsman model of law practice, like a goldsmith at his bench making one ring at a time with his hammer, and that is the way all of us, for the most part, still practice law, save for the innovations of rabble law and allegory. That is not a cost-effective or indeed effective way of delivering legal services in this context. One needs to build service as a product. McKinsey now delivers part of its management consulting service as a product. Deloitte does. The Harvard Business Review encourages all of us in professional services to build products. So what is it that Neota Logic does? We enable lawyers to build very smart products. <laughs> It is an artificial intelligence software platform, and we focus on the three things that lawyers know. Lawyers have expertise about the law, past, future, precedent, and so on. They have knowledge about process and knowledge about documents. And ours is a platform that is designed for people who are not programmers. I can teach anyone in this room to use our software to build applications within a few days. At the heart of our software is a proprietary inference engine which integrates a whole range of algorithms. The ones on the yellow and blue are ones we've written. We continue to write more. The ones on the right are algorithms written by hundreds of people who are very smart and build tools that you, as people who want to use AI in a practical way, need to integrate or can integrate to solve a particular problem. It is a tool designed, as I said, for people who are not programmers. The people who build the things that I'm going to show you in a second uh, are lawyers and practice support professionals. So, some examples. Uh, Foley and Lardner has built a service uh, to serve global businesses that do not have <coughs> compliance officers to avoid Foreign Corrupt Practices Act problems. It's built on our technology. Uh, Ackerman has built a data law center which answers 24-7 around the clock questions about data breach, data privacy, and other data law issues. As one of our clients, the general counsel of a big bank, said, no more memos, I want answers. Our software, no combined with the expertise answers. of Ackerman, delivers answers. Uh, Hush Blackwell has built a tool that solves an aspect of, a legal aspect of the problem of campus violence for universities across the country. And Littler Mendelssohn, a labor law firm, has created with us a joint venture called Compliance HR, 
which sells a whole range of solutions built on our platform that deliver immediate, cost-effective answers to employment law questions. That's it. Thank you. In, a short, in short, in a sense, what we do is enable law firms to leverage without associates and to bill without ours. And according to this morning's panel, those are good things to do. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. good, Sharks, don't you think? What, what, what say you? Do you run up against UPL issues? Uh, no, because in the corporate context, uh, the general counsels are vetting and installing these systems for the use of their clients. We are not in the consumer space, except in the access to justice work we do. Okay. Is that pro bono? Oh, never mind. But I'm sure it is. But It is. So, uh, go ahead, Ralph. So, so you are not in the consumer space except for access to justice, meaning, meaning, what, meaning civil access to justice as civil well as criminal? Civil access to justice. We, we are working with uh, pro bono organizations around the country. Some of them, we're, we have a collaboration with the Legal Services Corporation in New Mexico and uh, some others coming. So we are working with organizations that deliver uh, nonprofit uh, legal aid and, or legal services to using our technology. So these, these applications enable the, the client, the user, to populate it with information. It's designed, you populate it with information and you get a response, you get, you get some answer? Like TurboTax. So what are the, what are the practice of, unauthorized practice of law, so the, 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 your apps aren't authorized to practice issues? In, in the corporate context, uh, we think we, that is not an issue because the licensees of the applications are general counsel who are making them available inside their corporations uh, to their employees. In the consumer context, there would be UPL issues, just as there were with LegalZoom and, and others. So if you tried to apply it to the Jim Sandman's example of the uncontested divorce and the 21 forms, you'd have, you'd have a, the, the current rules would be an impediment. They would, except that the organizations we work with in the access to justice space, uh, they build the applications and they deliver those services. Just as Law Help Interactive, for example, a service funded by the Legal Services Corporation, delivers uh, more than half a million documents every year in mm -hmm. a legal Zoom-like context. So when Susskind said, uh, uh, if your work is going to be cannibalized eventually, why not be first to dinner? Uh, first one to dinner. That's really what you're, what you're talking about here. We used to be able to, somebody posed a question and we could uh, have some associates busy away and handing them a memo which contained uh, the answer. Here, uh, the, the GC or in-house lawyer can log in at night, get an answer, uh, and so, uh, and so it, it cannibalizes some work, but I think you're gonna tell me that how, it's, how the firm can capture more revenue in different ways because they adopt your system. The, these are commercial propositions by these firms, but as I say to partners in a law firm, if your business model is doing the work with lawyers that my software can do, you better get another business model. <laughs> I'm gonna take my prerogative as moderator and ask you one quick question. If you could tell us a little bit like, well, how much does it cost? Let's say I came to you and I said, I'd like to maybe build something. Maybe somebody in this room says, you know, I'd, I might be interested in doing something. Uh, I didn't hear anything about how much it costs. That always is sure. a scary idea, right, when they won't tell you how much uh, it is. We, we license the software. We're not in the, we're not in the business of building uh, applications okay. other, than, other than in the joint venture. We license the software for some number of thousands okay. of dollars so a year. So seat licenses or? No, uh, it's unlimited usage license. It's based okay. on the number of applications you build. Number of applications that you build. Michael, how many legal use cases can you get out of your platform? Uh, we have a list of about 75. How many more will? Uh, how many more potentially could use cases could come from your platform? Uh, well, we we will announce in the first quarter of next year another joint venture on the scale of the, of the compliance HR joint venture in a totally different subject matter. We think there are half a dozen more of those, very large scale, but there are scores and scores of use cases that individual law firms have developed that nobody's around. thought about yet. In other words, they're just waiting there to to, to meet your platform. Any area Correct. of law could be enabled through your platform. Primarily com uh, compliance and regulatory okay. right. applications. Okay. We don't do much in litigation except litigation planning and case evaluation. And in the corporate transaction context, large-scale fancy, uh, fancy transactions, no, that's not us. We're in the routine right-hand side of those well, why, why couldn't you be in part of fancy Dan transactions? Why couldn't you be, the, these apps be an engine to, to do elements of the work that's otherwise com complex but has 
parts that are routine. They, they could and they are in, in one of our firms, a global firm that does a very high-end mergers and acquisitions practice. Our software is used to answer the global version of the Hart Scott Rodino question. I just want to check, you're, you're doing this, you're picking somebody's brains who's the domain expert, let's say at Littler, to build the compliance HR system. And that's potentially a feed or two other work, which means at some point the answer is going to be, this is complicated, see one of our lawyers? That, that, is, that is true. There is a risk tolerance built into every one of these applications. Okay. In some contexts, you give a clear answer. In other contexts, you say a clear answer negative. And in other contexts, you say this requires a lawyer. And is there a subscription fee? Are they using this for their own clients? In other words, that that's an added value yes. and it becomes the, IP the, the for the law firm? The firms whose uh, applications I showed you license those to their clients, and all of them have uh, a flow of traditional legal work arising out of that. It is not, in fact, cannibalizing the work that they do because their clients took that routine work away from them years ago. Right. So, and so this is sticky and uh, probably it is lock indeed. in with their clients. They're not going to want to go somewhere else. Because, yes. Okay. All right, folks, Neo to Logic. Thank you very much, thank Michael. Thank you. All right.